Welcome to My on Mondays, an explorative approach to the possessive my through narratives, art, and sound. Each Monday brings a new creation and unique perspective. My on Mondays is brought to you by Ming Studios, a contemporary art space and international artist residency program dedicated to the exhibition, experience, and exploration of arts and culture. Along with exhibiting artists from around the world, Ming also serves the community by hosting innovative programs including performances, workshops, screenings, readings, artist talks, and other cultural activities. For more information or if you'd like to participate in Mayan Mondays, you can visit our website at mingstudios.org. Hello and welcome to the 145th episode of My on Mondays. As the world is focused on the Olympic Games in Paris, I thought I'd share some poetry from ancient Greece. The two poems I've chosen are by Sappho, who was born around 620 BCE on the island of Lesbos. Sappho wrote lyric poetry meant to be sung while accompanied by music. Throughout history, she's been the subject of much ridicule and even hatred due to her sexual preferences, but in antiquity she was considered among the greatest of poets, with Plato hailing her as the tenth muse. The first poem we're sharing with you today is Hymn to Aphrodite. In Edwin Marion Cox's book, The Poems of Sappho, he explains that the Greek text of this poem was preserved by the Roman Dionysius of Halicarnassus, and that his praise of it was, quote, unstinted and that of all translations this nineteenth-century translation by John Addington Simmons was one of the best. The second poem is Lyric 31, the most well-known and only complete surviving poem by Sappho, which narrates in vivid detail the jealousy felt at witnessing the conversation of her beloved with another man. This particular translation is by Lord Byron. Hymn to Aphrodite Glittering throned, undying Aphrodite, wild weaving daughter of high Zeus, I pray thee tame not my soul with heavy woe, dread mistress, nay, nor with anguish, but hither come, if ever erst old time thou didst incline, and listens to my crying, and from thy father's palace down descending camest with golden chariot yoked. Thee fair swift flying sparrows over dark earth with multitudinous fluttering, Pinion on pinion through middle ether, down from heaven hurried. Quickly they came like light, and thou, blessed lady, Smiling with clear, undying eyes, didst ask me, What was the woe that troubled me, and wherefore I had cried to thee? What thing I longed for to appease my frantic soul, And whom now must I persuade, thou asked? Whom must entangle to thy love, and who now, Sappho, hath wronged thee? Yea, for if now he shun, he soon shall chase thee. Yea, if he not take gifts, he soon shall give them. Yea, if he love not soon, shall he begin to love thee, unwilling. Come to me now, too, and from tyrannous sorrow free me, and all things that my soul desires have done do for me, queen, and let thyself, too, be my great ally. Lyric 31 Equal to Jove that youth must be, Greater than Jove he seems to me, Who, freed from jealousy's alarms, Securely views my matchless charms. Ah, Lesbia, though tis death to me, I cannot choose but look on thee, But at the sight my senses fly, I needs must gaze, but gazing die, Whilst trembling with a thousand fears, parched to the throat my tongue adheres, my pulse beats quick, my breath heaves short, my limbs deny their slight support. Cold dews my pallid face o'erspread, with deadly languor droops my head, my ears with tingling echoes ring, and life itself is on the wing. My eyes refuse the cheering light, their orbs are veiled in starless night. Such pangs my nature sinks beneath, and feels a temporary death. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Monday. Tune in.